The causes of bipolar disorder are, are not really that well understood. Because uh, psychiatric illnesses carry a stigma, they're not as well represented publicly, the funding doesn't follow, so that, that psychiatric research is still in its infancy. Treatments for, for any psychiatric condition generally focus on medication and non-medication ways of, of addressing symptoms. The non-medication part is generally described as therapy, but therapy is a universe unto itself. So we try to combine medication with some non-medication approaches to do the best we can to help people uh, reduce the, the, the symptom burden that they have. I'm Kira Foster and I have bipolar disorder. Doctors say that I have to take medication for the rest of my life. I'm not happy with that. I need to find out if there's a different way to get better. I have a very messed up life, and not too long ago, I was 280 pounds. I think my bipolar disorder was the cause of the trauma I went through growing up. Sometimes I think, what is real? Who am I? Am I going crazy? Am I dreaming? Am I dead? I've been through a lot of things in my life. Why can't my brain handle it? Why can't my emotions handle it? Does anyone have new ideas about mental illness? I actually grew up in a small town called Elmer. Growing up, was pretty easy, but then it was pretty hard is because I was going through surgeries. At six months old, I was diagnosed with cerebral palsy. I had a stroke coming down my mom's birth canal. Since I've been born, it's been a struggle. I have two sisters. I'm the middle child. We've always got along. But me and my older sister do have a love-hate relationship. And me and my younger sister, we talk in a once in a blue moon, I love my sisters to death. It's hard. People need to realize it's not easy living with a disability and a mental illness at the same time. Sometimes I come home crying from school because I've been teased. My childhood was... <laughs> Can we skip that question, please, for right now? Mental illness certainly has a long history of uh, being stigmatized. We've really only decided to study mental illness scientifically for about the last 100 to 150 years. Prior to that, people were generally kept in asylums outside of cities, and mental illness was either viewed as a character defect, or more importantly, it was viewed as demonic possession. So it, it's carried this historical taint of uh, not fitting in with society and um, that, that people were really treated quite poorly in an effort to get rid of it. I, I frequently been asked about why there's a hospital in St. Thomas and if it's related to a higher incidence of, of mental illness. So I'm not aware that there's epidemiologic evidence showing that there is a higher rate of mental illness in St. Thomas. 
but I do have some thoughts on why it may appear that that's the case. The people that were previously hospitalized there would not have stayed there forever. They would have been released at some point, and if they had some familiarity with St. Thomas, they probably would have stuck around because they knew it. And these people will go on to have relationships and may have had children, so they would have passed along the genetic susceptibility for their illnesses. Secondly, the people that were housed in the St. Thomas Hospital suffered from serious chronic illnesses and may just be more visibly mentally ill than some other people. And lastly, in any community that has um, a socioeconomic disadvantage, uh, struggle with poverty, or has high rates of sub substance abuse, will also see higher rates of mental illness. Chances are, if you are mentally ill in St. Thomas, you will come to the Grace Cafe, have a bite to eat, because the owner, Ginny, welcomes the less unfortunate. She represents the best in compassion that St. Thomas has to offer. Ginny, what exactly is the Grace Cafe? We're a charity and we are dedicated to just helping every possible way we can. Um, we give them food and clothing and um, comfort and, and as much enjoyment as possible and we encourage them. When did you decide to open it? It was about three years ago in the summer. I was driving along um, and I was seeing a, a building at the corner of um, Talbot and I was thinking um, maybe I could do that, maybe I could open a soup kitchen. And I asked my husband what he thought about it, and he said, uh, let's do it. So we went ahead, and it was the first six months was um, just building this place. It was um, just a dump. How do you keep this place running? Hard work, diligence. And um, we are not provided for financially by the government or by any institution or any church. Um, it's just strictly people give us um, money or donate uh, clothes or food. We just keep on going and it keeps on coming in. This is a very caring community. Um, but as caring as St. Thomas is, it's still not uh, enough to meet the tremendous need. What type of people come here and any of them mentally challenged? I actually think almost everyone is. Um, and it would be for different reasons, which I am not privy to. Um, I mean, it could be old age. It could be that they have mental challenges because of medications, either self-medicating or from the street or you know, recreational drugs or doctor's um, prescriptions. And I mean, maybe they were born that way. Maybe they had a car accident. I mean, there's all kinds of reasons why that would be they are mentally challenged. But if not just mentally challenged, physically challenged, physically and mentally challenged, and um, homeless for all kinds of reasons, or just down on their luck and not able to stretch a dollar, and so then we're beneficial for that. You know, a lot of people think it's just for homeless. No, you know, we'll we'll help you stretch your dollar. Come and eat here. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Tell me about Mikey. Some of our people are so adorable. And that would be someone we call Mikey the Bikey. And um, that's because we uh, arranged for him to get a bicycle one year and then it fell apart and so we got him another one. And, but um, challenged in a lot of ways, but just so sweet, so kind, so sweet in every possible way. And, um, he passed away recently, and I put it on Facebook, and there were almost 8,000 hits on it. Um, he was well-loved, and he's been around a long time in this town, and we're really going to miss him. We can't do anything about their mental problems. We can just love them through it, hug them through it, encourage them through it, but as to a long-term uh, solution, we are not those people. We are just um, trying to help people make it through their lives and that the quality is a little better than it was and anything we can do. There are not a lot of places that mentally ill people are accepted in our society. Thankfully, there's people like Ginny.
At PSNE, it's safe to socialize with other people who share the burden of mental illness. We get a lot of help here with the things we need. Welcome. This is PSNE where I hang out. This is the room that has no internet on the computer. This is where all we get our coffees. This room is the coupon room where we do coupons and save money. This is our wall of certificates that everybody does. This is our social room where everybody hangs out. This is a volunteer and staff room only and for on duty. And this is the front room, all my friends. If you're not locked up, you can come hang out here. This is Lori. She's my street mom and she knows a lot about me. I've known Kira for probably seven or eight years, I'm guessing. Yeah. Um, she's sometimes very hard to handle and it really depends on what has happened that particular day or that particular week. If she's having a bad week, chances are nobody will see her for a day or two and I'll have to go ask and send somebody out to find her. Um, she's very emotional. On a bad day, she's really emotional. On a good day or a good weekend, she usually has lots to say and wants to tell it 10 million times because that's Kira. Putting up with her? No. That's not easy to do some days. Some days it takes all morning, some days it takes all afternoon. Her, her I mean, mental health diagnosis is up and down. Her life structure is up and down sometimes depending on what's happening at the moment. She worries whether she's going to say the right thing or do the wrong thing, or she's going to burst into tears. It, sometimes it, it seems like there's an, uh, an emotional front of I'm angry or I'm mad and a, and a storm out the door, and it will be a week or a few days before she comes back through the door. I generally just accept it for what it is and don't have a conversation unless she comes looking for me, but her facial expressions, her body language, tells you whether it's been a bad day or a good day or whether it's still affecting her or not. I am going to tell you what kind of medication I'm on. I'm on Zoloft and Nordisterpoline. They are for my moods. Before I was on them, I was up and down with my moods, couldn't do anything. And now since I've been on them, I've, I've been out more getting to know more people and to figure out why I have this and to get better at it and to figure out and learn about what I have. What do you learn? Is not to let everything bug me all at once and not to get overwhelmed over little things that I shouldn't get overwhelmed with. And when you need support, where are you supposed to go? I come to PSNE. Talk to Lori or talk to other people. But I usually more talked with Lori than I do with anybody else because she's known me the longest. PSNE does um, services for individuals that are mental health and addictions and poverty and homelessness. So we have our food bank and our canteen and we do a lot of socializing. And a lot of the peer workers that work here and volunteer here spend a lot of time doing one-on-ones. And Kira is one of those one-on-ones that usually finds my doorway once or twice a week. I come here, play bingo, I help with canteen, I do the clothing room and just hang out with everybody. When she's having a really good day, she's usually the supporter. She'll help somebody with that get breakfast or but more go get coffee for people that can't go to Tim Hortons. More socialization and peer support than, you know, our accessing our services like food bank and that kind of. She's pretty independent that way. She doesn't like people to give her stuff. Nope. I think it's gave her some place to go that she feels safe. That it doesn't matter if she left mad, she knows she can come back to. Mm -hmm. 
This is my second home, pretty much. No crying. <laughs> it's gonna be an emotional day, so it's all good. Okay, you got this. There goes my makeup. <laughs> it's just hard dealing with my, with my mental illness. I just don't know what to do. I don't. It's hard. I don't know where to start. I don't know where to end. I just don't know where to start. I don't. It gets me when people don't understand what people go through with mental illness. It's, they don't. It, it kills me because I have to repeat myself time after time after time. I'm like, okay, I have a mental illness. You guys have to realize I have my up and downs. And if I'm up having my up and downs, don't get in my face or anything like that. But... Yeah, I just, oh, it's just a lot. It's overwhelming. I just don't want to have a mental illness, but I was, I have it. And Laurie's been there for, with me since day one, and I'm never gonna give that up. The relationship I have with Lori is like a f really close friend. I can go to her to talk to when I have problems. She understands where I come from. If I didn't get the support from PSNE and the people like Lori, I would be in trouble. I'm going to see Karen Barkley, a local psychic medium, since I'm not sure where to start. Karen says that she reads people's energy fields and helps them relearn their inner wisdom. Um, bipolarism is actually one of the most misdiagnosed mental illness diseases on this planet at this time. So what I'm going to be doing is offering a point of view from a superior intelligence or from a subconscious realm. We are energy beings and with being energy beings we are highly sensitive to our reality tunnels, to the different consciousness around here. You have to start to believe in the possibility that there's something else out there. And what happened to you and the mechanisms of your bipolarism is yes, you do have a slight chemical imbalance, but more so this chemical imbalance can be corrected because everything's a vibrational energy and everything's a vibrational thought. So where you sit today when you ask if we can give you a different concept, yes, we can. The work you'll have to do. And it comes as simple as changing your thought pattern. The medication that you have been on will sort of give you kind of a duller point of view so that your own nervous system, your own neurons, your own synapse patterns, your own thought patterns get blocked. The voices that you've been hearing throughout your lifetime, they're normal. Can you come off your medication right away? No, you can't because you're so-called addicted to it in your physical body. The professionals need the energy workers just as much as the energy workers need the professionals to come on board so that we can correct the most relevant disease walking this planet at the moment, which is mental illness. So what we're going to be asking you to do is to go back and sit there and remember that beautiful little child before the age of 18 months that started to go down another road. 
and sit there and say, okay, fine. It was a fake illusion and I can start fresh today. And you can start fresh any day. Do you have complete bipolarism? I would argue no. But as an energy worker, which is my passion to help you guys, I can sit here and say your chemicals are off because of the medication you're on. Your reality tunnels are off because you've been filled with other people's points of views. The problems that you're facing right now are the fact that you don't know where to start. You have been told that you have limited intelligence. You've been told that you've had limited physical capabilities. So now you've got to kind of release this. Energy is just energy. And true energy runs on this. Peace, love, understanding, and not judgment. And you've had many false labels put on you. And actually, you yourself know you're an extremely strong person or you wouldn't be sitting here to tell your story and to tell your journey. So what you're going to start to do is simple little things. And the first thing is you're going to learn to love yourself. And that is the hardest for many of us. And the one thing that you've got to decide is, do you want to change? I do want to change. And do you believe you can change? I can, but it's just everybody, it, okay. I get You're there. at 54% that you yourself can believe that you can change. So when you look back at how much you survived, you step forward. So the simple thing to retrain your brain as quickly as possible, whether it be from a mental point of view or from a physical point of view, is to use these two words followed by empowering statements, which you yourself will put in place, but we'll give you some help. I am. I am is extremely, extremely, extremely important because it's in all the spiritual realms. I am empowering. I am this. I am can also do this. I'm stupid. I'm fat. I'm lazy. I'm retarded. I'm a drunk. I'm this. So how you put it in, you have to always empower. Okay? When we say the words I am, our cerebral cortex, our neurons, our synapse patterns in our brain start to register and they change. Because if I fast forward your life in the next five years, and I'm going to use a five year synchromet because that's where you kind of go through things every five years, I actually see you working in an atmosphere like this, but it's empowering people. And actually, I see you going back to school and getting paid for it. Now you're going to sit there and say, I can't do school. I can barely read. It's true. I can't. No, no. Listen to what you said there. It's true. I can't. So what are you doing? You're saying to your brain, I can't learn how to do this. But what we want you to do now is sit there and say, I want that dream. You do these simple exercises. I am loving myself. And my passion is this, to help you guys understand that anything you're feeling, those voices that kind of turning around, speak up about them. 95% of what you're hearing is true. Your grandmother's sitting there and you miss her terribly. And she's with you every step of the way on this walk, baby. And she was a strong woman that went through hell herself. But she empowers you. And you do see her clearly. And there's nothing wrong with that. So when you're be moving into being empowered, those silly little vibrations I am, they do work. Because what it does is it slowly starts to change every thought pattern within your cellular membrane. But do you believe in a superior intelligence, whether it be God's, or whether it just be your grandma kicking your backside from the other side? It's my grandma kicking me on the backside. Okay. If I don't, I know she will be mad at me, so. It's... Well, they don't hold emotion there, except for love and peace. And does she want to see you loving and peace, peaceful of yourself? Of course she does. 
So when you're going to start to explore, you're going to start to build yourself around positive people, a good support team, a good place to start. You're also going to start to make little changes and come out of your comfort zone. And that also is hard to move out of a comfort zone. But just look how far out of your comfort zone you are today. Yeah. You're way out. You're swimming way out in the deep end with the sharks. Yep, I am. But the sharks are friendly. Yeah. Okay? Do you want to change? And are you willing to start with those silly little things like I am? Yeah, I want to change so bad. It's just hard. Okay, so you're going to change this. Listen back to what you said. I want to change... I want to change, but it's so hard. You've done this. Hard. What are you going to get? Hard. Are you going to be able to make those changes when you're still in that vibrational frequency of hard? No, you won't. So you're going to be even watching the words that you catch and sit there and say, okay, I am changing. And you're going to say, I am getting better. That will at least switch that vibrational energy field over a little bit. Rechange your programming in your thought pattern. Rechange the programming in your physical body. And then it will come back up to, this is easy. Okay? So what you're going to be saying is, I am detoxing past emotions. Because that's what we're all doing on this planet. Then you're going to say, I am empowering myself. Because you're going to switch the role of the victim and false reality to this is what I want in my life. And the road that you've chosen has been a bumpy one. But when you get to the top of this road, you're going to look back and you're going to go, oh my God, it made me who I am. When Karen started talking about my grandmother, it opened up a new chapter. I can actually see her and actually have a verbal conversation. I miss my grandma. Karen says my own energy thought patterns need to change if I want to improve my life. That got me motivated to find out more about how energy works. According to Nikola Tesla, considered by many to be the greatest scientific mind of the 20th century, thought patterns are frequencies. Alpha waves in the human brain are between 6 and 8 hertz. The wave frequency of the human cavity resonates between 6 and 8 hertz. All biological systems operate in the same frequency range. The human brain's alpha waves function in this range, and the electrical resonance of the Earth is between 6 and 8 hertz. Thus, our entire biological system, the brain and the Earth itself, work on the same frequencies. If we can control the resonance system electronically, we can directly control the entire mental system of humankind. So according to Tesla, there is more to mental illness than people think. And there may be ways to fix it. It may be a frequency imbalance and not a chemical imbalance. I need to learn more about how energy affects mental illness. My frequency right now is deep emotional pain, which I think may have triggered my bipolar disorder. Now I want to find a way to clear those emotions with no needles or drugs. Alla, what is biofeedback analysis testing? Well, your body gives us clues by either strengthening a muscle or weakening it when we isolate it and put a substance to it. So I have substances in energetic frequencies. So for example, here we have caffeine and alcohol, but this doesn't actually have caffeine in it. It's just charged to the vibrational energy of caffeine. So we can see how your body responds to it. For example, would you like to do some testing? Sure. Okay. Rest your elbow comfortably and put two of your fingers together and just hold firmly and I'm just going to get you to resist when I try to see how much pressure to use. Okay, using the same strength, I'm just going to test your polarity first. So I'm gonna put my hand over top of your head. Okay. So this is like putting positive to negative with the different charges. And then hold once again. So this is like putting negative to negative, so that repelled. And then I'm just gonna grab a substance here and put it up to your arm. 
See how that goes very weak? Mm -hmm. Now this one happens to be dopamine, so that seems to be quite out of balance bioenergetically. We're just gonna grab another one here. Okay, so that one tests quite strongly, which means it's not out of balance now. This one happens to be charged to alcohol. It doesn't mean it's good for you, but it just means that it doesn't happen to be one of your main stressors. Okay. okay. If you started drinking it every day, it probably would. So okay. <laughs> let's not do that. Um, let's just test a couple more things here then. So that one is quite sensitive, and it happens to be the vial that's charged to the vibrational frequency of stress. So stress weakens your body more than someone who doesn't get weakened by it as much. Ready to do a couple more? Yes. All right, so you're not crossing your ankles, right? Nope. Good. All right, hold. Okay. So that one's quite weak. This is one of the most sensitive ones that we've tested so far, and it happens to be GABA. So that's a neurotransmitter that involves peripheral movement in your body, but as well as um, helping feel calm and focused in your central nervous system. Okay. So, let's see. I think I want to actually test you for this one as well. Okay, so that one happens to be a grouping of substances. Uh, and I have in here, I call it the stress response. So it's things like adrenaline and um, the adrenal glands with stress hormones and how your body responds to um, like a fight or flight type of a situation. So some people, can handle stress a little bit more resiliently and then some people get very weakened by it. Can you explain homeostatic imbalance and stressors? So the stressors are the, the things that weaken your body. Now here we're seeing it on a muscular level, but when we translate it into physiological, it can be affecting the nervous system. So some people feel tired or get headaches. Um, some people feel it in their respiratory system or in their skin. And so these homeostatic imbalances are just creating symptoms somewhere in the body, and it can be different for different people. What is mental illness from a bioenergetic view? So bioenergetic just means the energy in your body, and we all know that we don't really see it, but it's there. And so with mental illness, it can affect um, the body in many different ways. Um, it's kind of different for different people. Uh, a lot of people feel like it affects their sleep and their ability to recuperate and function um, maybe with, without getting distracted very easily. So from a bioenergetic view, we can detect different neurotransmitters, see if they're out of balance. Um, a lot of the neurotransmitters require proper protein and B vitamins in order to convert them. So we can sort of look at the bioenergetic point and then incorporate it into your actual life by including more foods that have certain substances in them, like B vitamins, for instance. Make sure you're getting enough protein to create those neurotransmitters. So bioenergetically, we're getting the information and then we're using it to incorporate it into physiological processes. What is rebalancing? Oh, the rebalancing is actually when we take all the substances that we found that aren't really functioning optimally in your body. So for example, we found uh, GABA and dopamine are a couple of the neurotransmitters that seem to be out of balance. Now, what we do is we place them on a witness plate that picks up on the vibrations and we introduce them to your body. So it's kind of like doing acupuncture without the needles, that's the good part, and then allergy shots without the needles. So we're introducing those vibrations energetically instead of injecting them in your arm. So the nice part is the no needles part. I like that part. Yeah. So um, from a bioenergetic view, uh, we send the information. There's a square carrier wave that carries and modulates the information on a cellular level. Now, when we introduce these frequencies, your body then knows how to process them. And then right after we do the procedure, we can recheck a couple of these things and they should test already um, more balanced. Okay, so do you want to try it now? Sure. All right. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're placing these substances all on the witness plate, which picks up on the vibrations, and then through stimulating your points, which we're going to do, we're going to send the information to your cells energetically so your body can recognize these substances and know how to process them more effectively. Okay? How does the device work? Well, when I turn it on, 
I'm going to set it to the right setting and then have you hold the grounding rod in your hand. And then I'm going to use the stylus to just stimulate different points on your body. So it's kind of like acupuncture without actually puncturing with needles. So we're just using a mild vibration to stimulate. Okay. Yeah. There we go. So just hold this one in your hand. Yeah. And then when we touch it on a point, it'll make a sound. But then when I press on the pedal, it'll start sending the information. So we're going to do some facial points first, okay? Okay. So normally during this part, I explain to people that they can maintain homeostatic balance by staying hydrated in the next couple days, since water will actually just help maintain the charge. And then if you can do an Epsom salts bath in the next few days, it'll also help drain your system a little bit more effectively and allow for movement throughout. And just to sort of introduce these a little bit better. So if you don't do an Epsom salts bath, it's okay. It'll still work. <laughs> do you like to take baths? Yes, I do. <laughs> I'm going to do the one near the top of your nose, okay? Okay. So what kind of stressors do you normally have in your life? Just getting sick and getting stressed about that and trying to deal with my mental illness and stuff like that. And do the other side now. Do you find you have some good mechanisms to relieve your stress, like yes. someone good to talk to? I do. Do you know some good breathing techniques to help you in a moment of stress? I breathe in and breathe out three times, then I kind of slow down. Excellent. So these next two points, I'm going to get you to just relax. It might feel, if you're a little ticklish, you might feel a little ticklish. It's just on your side, okay? Okay. So I'm just going to come around here. Sorry. There we go. How long do I need to get balanced? Everyone's really different, but usually within one to four sessions, we can remove enough interferences to where the person's body can handle substances much better on its own. Now, for this other point, I'm just going to see if I can get you to hold it on the side. Here we go. So again, it might be a little bit ticklish on this side. Sorry about that. There we go. Okay. <laughs> that tickled. It's probably one of the most uncomfortable points for most people if they are ticklish. There is, I won't lie, there is one on the foot that some people don't like. Well, my feet are ticklish. <laughs> Thanks I'm, for the warning. I'm very ticklish. So. <laughs> Speaking of feet, we just have the foot <laughs> points left. <laughs> How long can I stay balanced? Well, if you stay hydrated, that really helps the process. And then to maintain balance long term, it's really important to take a look at what you're doing as far as on a daily basis. So if you're eating a certain breakfast, it's really great to sometimes switch up your food so you're getting more variety of nutrients to help your nervous system because the building blocks to the nervous system, sorry about that. Um, <laughs> You are ticklish. <laughs> yeah. The nervous system requires B vitamins and amino acids from proteins. So it's how we digest our food as well. So if you're not chewing properly, if you're eating in a hurry and you're very stressed, stress overrides a lot of functions in the body. So our body, our brain doesn't know the difference between thinking about stress and actually undergoing stress. It releases the same chemicals and it overpowers all the other functions. So that's why people inject epinephrine when they're having an anaphylactic reaction because that overrides death. Okay. I'm going to actually do the last point on that foot and um, this one's probably one of people's least favorites so it's just on the underside here. There we go. Do you think I have a frequency imbalance or a chemical one? That's actually an interesting question because to me, it actually means almost the same thing because we are biochemical beings. We have chemicals in our body, we're electrical beings as well. 
And so when we show an imbalance in one way, it can translate into showing it on a physiological level. So by having a frequency imbalance to dopamine, let's say, for example, it's kind of like saying the same thing chemically. Mm -hmm. By rebalancing you bioenergetically for it, though, it'll help you on a physiological level to process that information more effectively. So we're almost done. And then we can pick a couple things and just retest them. And we can even do it here if you'd like. Okay. Now, how do you feel? Calm. And my hands are like tingly. Oh. This one more than that more one. Tingly. Yeah. Well, you did have the grounding rod there, so it was a complete circuit. You weren't holding it too tight, were you? No. Okay. It yeah. just feels weird. Are you able to rest your elbow comfortably on the chair there? Yes. Just so we can isolate your fingers again? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna get you to just relax for a moment. And then hold. I'm going to test your polarity again just to make sure okay. that we're testing accurately. So just hold for a second. And then one more time. Perfect, we're nice and balanced. So I'm just gonna grab the bundle here and just gonna put it up here. Okay, remember the stress response, mm -hmm. which showed quite weak. Now we can always um, test the opposite muscle here and just hold. Okay, so see how it's weaker there, right? Mm -hmm. So that's good because if it's attracting to your arm, it's gonna attract to your leg away from your arm. And okay. this is our indicator muscle here. So that means everything that was on the witness plate should be now strong on the indicator muscle, which means your body knows how to process it bioenergetically. Nice, cool. I felt a instant calmness after I met with Ella. I know what are my things I need to work on. I've learned a lot. Alice says she measured the energetic imbalance in my body and brain and sent frequencies into my body to rebalance my energy. If the blockages are gone, then my energy should flow more freely. But how did people stay balanced before this kind of technology came along? I'm going to the Oneida First Nation to find out. Well, from a traditional First Nation view on uh, mental illness, uh, we don't perceive it as, as an illness. Uh, our point of view is it's, it's more of a gift and we have to explain that gift to somebody in order for them to feel more valid of who they are. Uh, a gift is something really powerful, and a lot of mental illnesses are powerful gifts that nobody has took time to explain and to guide and work with that person. In your point of view, what is bipolar disorder? It's because you're extreme sensitive uh, to the environment, to uh, energies, and, and it can, y your gift picks that up and then people see you happy one moment, mad the next moment, sad, you know, all these different emotions going on from one end of the spectrum to the other end of the spectrum. Um, empaths tend to be prescribed as bipolar. An empath is somebody that absorbs people's energy and then they don't know what to do with it. You have so much energy going on in your mind, body, spirit that it seems like you're mad. And the next minute, no, you're, you're happy because somebody else has walked by and they have these really happy feelings and you soak that up. Now, the next thing you know, you're all happy and you don't know what's going on yourself because there's energies going on that's uh, um, unexplainable to yourself. But when somebody works with an elder, and I'm talking an elder, you could work with an elder 30, 40 years before you get into what you're supposed to be doing. People used to watch the babies grow 
And, and as they grew, the elders would, would determine who you're going to sit with, who you're going to spend most of your life with. And I don't mean as a partner, but I mean as a person that you're going to work with. Would we call them as uncle or auntie? So when, when you get to a certain age, um, as an adult, you get put with your uncle or auntie because they have the knowledge to work with that person to help them through that thing. And so people with bipolar would be perceived as, as a really special gift for somebody to work with them, to help them, as opposed to the way the European people look at bipolar. We medicate, calm you down, keep you on a straight line. But it, it's a medicine that comes from within. It's a medicine that's going to help you become stronger and help the community somehow. Does traditional healing exist from mental illness or bipolar disorder? Um, that's a really tough question to answer because I said like it's viewed more of a of, as a gift. So uh, there are medicines though in nature. There, there's medicines that can help our mind think clear. There's medicines that sent to help balance things out in life because there's the four elements of life that we look at for each individual is mind, body, spirit, and the emotions. And all those things are affected by what we eat, uh, how we live our life, and different activities that we do in the spirituality of, of life. Uh, most people don't incorporate all those things into their life, and so it goes out of balance. So sometimes if you're not one that can go out and pick your medicines, then you go visit a medicine person and they, they will help you with certain things. Uh, they can give you herbs that will help balance these emotions out. Um, what happens in a healing session? During a, a healing session, your consciousness can travel. Uh, by that, what I mean that is like your spirit. And when we look at spirit and consciousness are quite often the same thing. Um, a spirit is energy that we all carry. And if you ever hold your hands apart from each other, you feel that energy. And that's who you are. That's your conscious level. And when we get to that level of, of healing through a ceremony, that the energy becomes really powerful. And quite often, most elders or most healers, what they'll do is they'll bring in um, your helpers from the past. And uh, that helps you balance your life out because the energy, the conscious level of you gets raised clear it and then put back into your body and then you become a stronger person because of that. Um, Einstein, uh, to, to quote somebody that, that's European, so energy is neither created nor is it destroyed. So when our ancestors go on to the physical, onto the spirit world, the conscious world, um, that energy is still there. And that's how, if anybody that works with energy knows that they can utilize that to help you become a stronger, better person. What should I do for more healing? The best thing I would do for you is, is to really watch your diet. Uh, make sure you drink a lot of fluid. Uh, in your own way, realize that you're picking up energy. And what I would do is, is develop a routine when you start to feel that. For instance, we, we did a smudging ceremony before we started this interview. If you start to smudge more often, when these feelings start to come, you're going to help ground yourself, balance yourself. And the best thing that you can do for your own mental health is find an elder to sit with, or, or what we call a grandmother or, or auntie, to sit with and, and find one that will help you because they went through that. The other thing is being mindful because you have a special gift of where you are. Uh, if you walk to the mall, you're going to pick up a lot of people's energy. And because you don't know how to protect yourself from the energy, that's when things can zip this way or zip that way. In any crowded place, in any environment like that, it's going to make things a lot tougher for you. Until you learn how to use your gift in, in, in a proper way, it's always going to be that way. ancestors and rainbow people who have come before us we ask you now to come forward with the ancient medicines today bring us your teachings bring us your wisdom 
so that we can follow your ways and learn the ways on the right path to healing. Miigwech, miigwech, miigwech. So I'm, I'm just curious, what, what would you like to get out of this, this session? To deal with this mental illness on my own without taking any medication. And are there any uh, particular emotions that you've been feeling? Not really, because when I get emotional, I don't know what it's about. It's because my head is, my brain is going a mile a minute, so I don't know which one it is, okay. to be honest. Okay. okay. And, um, and in terms of any type of life patterns, like do you have any negative patterns in your life? So example might be, um, you know, feeling a certain way all the time, or even the, the, the issue that you said with your head, you know, just things like that, like things that keep happening over and over. Are, is there anything you can tell me about? Well, with my disability to be, right, it's really hard for me to do things okay. and maybe get that more strength in my left side to use my hand and foot more often than I do now. Okay. Usually when, when I'm working with somebody, I try to listen to what creator has to say or what the grandmothers and guides have to say, um, as we all have uh, I guess, spirits that will help us. So you have a group of people or beings that will help you, and I have a group of people that will help me. And many of them, of course, are healers when I'm working with people. And so what I'd like to do is, is have them show me what's happening with you and see if they have any, any messages. Okay. Now, is it okay, Kira, if I uh, uh, speak some of these messages out loud, or would you like me to keep them you, private? It's all right with me. Okay. Um, so, basically, as, as the grandmothers uh, come forward, um, they speak of uh, feelings of um, a lot of anxiety and not being able to sort of uh, turn off. Um, it's like a wound feeling. It's like feeling wound all the time. And, um, and there's also feelings of, of not being able to find a, a feeling of peace. It's like never feeling peaceful, always feeling this constant sort of anxious, overwhelmed feeling. And part of that is because you're what we call a hypersensitive. So, and that's not a bad thing. Uh, actually, I, I treat a lot of, mo many of my clients are hypersensitive, um, but it's because your um, boundaries are um, I'd say more open or less strong than say the average person's. So when something, when there's energy around or if someone does something to you and say they call you a name or they're terrible to you in some way, you, it actually affects you more deeply than an average individual. Okay, does that make sense to you? Yes. Yes, okay. So that being said, all your emotions are amplified, they're overcharged, okay? So when you either feel nothing or you feel a whole bunch of stuff and you can't sort through it, okay? Um, and the other thing too is there's a, there's a deep feeling of despair that's, that's coming up um, and also a feeling of self-hatred. Um, and so we're, we'd like to help you with that moving forward. You also have a grandmother here who is um, uh, saying to you uh, that you are loved, okay? There's a, a grandmother from the past here for you, and she is letting you know that you are very, very loved, and that uh, that she, you're not alone on this journey, and that she's trying to help you, and that the spirit world is actually trying to connect with you, and those the loved ones in the past that have um, that are, have passed before you are they are trying to connect, especially this woman here. Okay, and um, she keeps, it's, it's like she wants to touch your head. She keeps trying to touch your head and saying, there, 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 there. So she wants you to know that she sends the greatest amount of love for you and the, the spirit world is here to, to assist you and, and they can very much assist you if you open your heart to, to healing. 
and, and to, their, um, to their assistance in general, okay? Um, the other thing too is that there's a part of you that thinks you're stupid, okay? So they keep saying to me, you're not stupid, you're not stupid, you're not stupid. And it's because they're, they're trying to help you to understand that much of what you've been through, because you have, you're more sensitive than other people, there's parts of you who, that have shut down. And so we want to help you to not only repair some of the things that need healing, but also to awaken the parts of yourself that will allow you to shine your light and to heal in the way that you'd like to heal. Okay? Okay. So that being said, um, we would like to look at repairing your spiritual fabric. Uh, and we'd also like to look at bringing you more into harmony with yourself and over time help you to awaken the parts of yourself that are actually a gift and a blessing to you. At this time, you have, uh, because you're of this hypersensitivity, all your gifts, all the things that make you special and that make you intuitive and that make you shine um, have felt like uh, curses, okay? And because you have a softness about you that hasn't been able to cope with being on this planet, being on the earth, okay? So what we want to do is reconnect you to yourself to bring harmony to you and to start your healing journey with the indigenous and traditional healing. Okay? Okay. Okay, so Kira, we're going to get started with your healing session today. And um, once again, I'm just going to call the grandmothers forward, and especially your grandmother, because she's here trying to assist you today. And I'm also going to call in the healers that help me, the ancient people that help me with the ancient wisdom so that I can help you, okay? So just allow yourself to uh, keep your eyes closed. And what I'd like you to do is breathe into your medicine bowl. So your medicine bowl is your lower belly. It's that area between your hips here, okay? And um, so that area is part of what needs to be healed in this session, but it's also the area that, um, that helps you to reconnect to yourself. It holds all your gifts, your medicines, your power. It holds what makes you uh, a woman, okay? So we want to start to help you to reconnect to that area. So Great Nokomis, once again we call you forward to the Great Grandmothers. To Kichimanado, to Great Creator, we ask you to come closer today, come closer now. We ask you to lift us up towards the heavens so Kira can receive the healing and wisdom she desires. And we also ask the great beings, the great totems, the great Makwa, the great bear, the great Mayingan, the great wolf, and the great Anamakig, the great thunder beings, to come forward to assist with her healing at this time. Miigwech, miigwech, miigwech. Now show me what to do. Okay. Miigwech. Okay. So we'd like you to take some nice deep breaths into your lower belly, into your medicine bowl, and just allow yourself to receive. Give yourself permission to receive the healing you desire, to receive the guidance and wisdom you desire.
Now we're also going to ask the grandmothers right now to help you cure with any fear that you have, fear of connecting to yourself. There's a part of you that wants to jump out of your body. So what we want to do is we want to help you come back into yourself and you can continue to breathe into your medicine bowl, but we're just going to ask the grandmothers to help you to release all thoughts, all feelings, all beliefs, and all imprints regarding your fear that it's unsafe to be here, that it's unsafe to be on Mother Earth, that it's unsafe to be in your body. And we're asking that they help you to release these fears now. Miigwech, miigwech. And just continue to breathe into your lower belly. Okay. And we're also going to ask the grandmothers and great creator to help you to release all thoughts, feelings, and beliefs around you being stupid or feeling stupid. We're asking that they help you to heal and release these thoughts and feelings now. And now we're going to ask the grandmothers and great creator to help you heal and release all feelings of self-hatred. We ask that they be healed and released now from every part of your being and from your medicine bowl. Oh, great spirit of the drum, we ask you now to come forward. Bring us your medicine today. Bring us the healing and power that you give us from the Earth Mother and from your great bones and skin. Miigwech, miigwech, miigwech. So now, Kira, are you with us? We'd like you just to take a moment to feel what's different in your mind, body, and spirit. And as you do so, we'd also like you to silently thank the grandmothers, great creator, and all the other beings that assisted you with your healing today for the healing and wisdom that you have received. And whenever you're ready, you can gently bring your awareness back. I feel weird. You feel sorry? I feel weird. What is weird? I feel tingling. Yes, tingling is good. Tingling and I have like no pain in my stomach. So you had pain before we started? <laughs> yeah. Good. So we've already started that healing process and that's very good. And my legs were twitching. Good. So you could feel the grandmothers and great creator working on you. That's great. <laughs> Do you have any questions or anything that you'd like to share? No, not right now. Okay. It, 
it's, it will come to me. It's just, I'm not ready to talk about it yet. <laughs> okay, that's fine. How do you feel mentally? How do you feel in your head? Has that changed at all? It's clear. There's like nothing there. Good. Very good. Nothing. To the indigenous people, mental illness is a growth experience. In their culture, they consider bipolar disorder a valuable gift that can be managed with the help of a mentor. I need to know more. I'm going to meet with a transpersonal psychologist to see what she has to say about mental illness. Di, what is transpersonal psychology? So what it is, is actually a blend of spirituality and science um, where it takes both elements of um, traditional psychology um, and looks at the human spiritual development um, and looks at more of a sort of an integrative approach to treatment. And so we look at our deepest wounds and needs, the um, human existential experience of crisis that we sometimes have, and then it moves down to the sort of more transcended capabilities of consciousness. What is mental illness from a transpersonal view? From a transpersonal perspective, we tend to see them beyond the pathological aspect of it as a spiritual awakening or a spiritual crisis or emergency. Um, and that often comes about when we tend to have um, sort of uh, an, an experience like maybe we did some work with a shaman or uh, we did some work in meditation and suddenly our kundalini energy, which is sort of the Indian philosophy, sort of awakens within our body. And as a result of that, we have this awareness of something bigger than who we are. Do I have some kind of spiritual imbalance? Kira, that's a good <laughs> question. I think we all have a spiritual imbalance. And what I mean by that is, I think I touched a little bit on that, the essence of who we, of who we really are. Um, at the core being of who we really are is this beautiful essence. Um, but because of our environment, because of our belief system, because of how you know, we've experienced life, we tend to shroud that essence with that conditioning. And I feel that you know, in order to get back to that essence of who we truly are and understand ourselves and that self-actualization, um, we do our work of healing those, those wounds that we have. Where do I fit in? Uh, from a transpersonal perspective, you're exactly where you're meant to be at every given time. Um, I think what happens is that we tend to go to a place of our conditioned ego, that there's something wrong, um, that, um, that our life doesn't have meaning if we are not a specific way. So you fit in perfectly, it's just for you to explore what that means for you. What is the transpersonal view on bipolar disorders? From a transpersonal perspective, it might be seen more than in terms of um, an awareness of a multidimensional, um, you know, when you sort of have your highs and your lows. The highs um, of euphoria that you might be experiencing might be the spiritual awakening that you're going through of, of looking at your life from a different perspective versus, you know, staying stuck in that conditioned ego. Do my emotions create frequencies? Oh, definitely. Uh, all our emotions create frequencies. Um, I think it's been measured. Um, David Hawkins' work, um, who unfortunately has passed away, he wrote a book called Power Versus Force. He talks about the frequency of emotions on a spectrum. So the lowest emotion that we tend to have, and a lot of us have this, is shame. And when we vibrate in shame, it keeps us stuck. It's that shroud, that big black cloud that, that prevents us from actually, again, bringing out that light of who we truly are, of being authentic, and moves up the spectrum from grief into anger. And eventually we vibrate in terms of love at 500 megahertz um, at a second. So when we work on ourselves, and each time we do a piece of intensive emotional work, our frequency does get higher and lighter. What is holotropic breath work? So basically it's circular breath and staying with that breath. And the whole purpose of that is to get you out of that conditioned ego. We have our defense mechanisms that keep us, our rational thoughts, our logic, that keep us you know, safe. 
uh, that's the conditioned ego. But holotrophic uh, breathwork actually takes us beyond that to have an experience where we sidebar that to an experience where we almost see our lives from a different perspective. It's like you put on a new pair of glasses and things seem a bit clearer. Have a heightened sense of awareness of things around you. Full deep breath in through your nostrils or in through your mouth. Having that breath go right down to your belly. And then relaxing, releasing that breath. And also it's a good time to check in with that thinking mind. Asking the thinking mind to step aside. Letting it know you'll come back and get it when you're finished your journey. We're breathing deeper and faster. Deeper and faster, deeper and faster, and have a wonderful journey as you breathe deeper and faster. Accessing deep emotions is hard work, okay? I want you to know that you've done some hard work here today. And do you feel like in accessing that you were able to release some of the intense emotions? For sure I did. I, I, have, I feel a lot more better that I actually got out what I needed to get out. Yeah. I'll get you to go over to that table there and there's a piece of paper there with a big circle on it. And we call it a Mandela. You get to draw whatever comes up for you, whatever from this experience, because we find that working with the Mandelas can be very helpful later. This was your inner process. We encourage people to go home, put it up, and look at it and remember this process. My mandala is pretty much is just the darkness that started, then the light, then how love me for who I am. Love, happiness, laugh and cry. That's what I do every day. Take me for who I am or take me as I am. Let peace be be with you and with you. And I have a heart and I have a flower saying that it's, I'm going in a new direction. After meeting Di and Susan, I feel like I have more understanding of myself now. I'm not just someone with an illness. I'm a spiritual person who is growing and learning about my relationships with people and everything else around me. But I still need to know why I had to suffer with so many problems. Why me? I also need to confirm how I can move forward in the best possible way. 
a therapy known as QHHT may give me some answers. Diane, what is QHHT? Okay, QHHT is quantum healing hypnosis technique, and it's a technique that was created and developed by a woman named Dolores Cannon. It's a natural, innate um, process that helps people to tune into their own inner answers from their higher self and also to access their own healing ability from their higher self. What is mental illness from the QHHT view? Well, from the view of QHHT, um, I could say that everything is just a thing and there's something there for us to learn. And a QHHT session will help one to find out maybe a deeper understanding of what is called mental illness. Um, it's a way to learn about the condition and how it applies to that specific person in their life and their soul's journey. Okay. Once we learn the lesson, we don't need the thing. We respect it as a teacher that we can learn from. What exactly is the higher self? The higher self in this work we call the subconscious because that's what Dolores Cannon called it. She always made it very clear that it wasn't the same subconscious that maybe psychologists talked about, but instead it was a collective of higher frequency energy um, that works with us while we are here in a physical body. It's like a guidance system. How does the subconscious operate in the hypnosis? Um, how it works in, in a session, a QHHT session, is that when people are very deeply relaxed, they are more able to hear the messages that are coming from the higher self or subconscious. Uh, they tune in and they receive information and maybe some inner visions, uh, maybe a story from another time that will help them to understand their life that they're living now. Will I see something while I'm under hypnosis? Mm -hmm. Yes, most people do see something. They have sort of an inner vision of something that's going on. Um, some people hear, see, sense, or know, but most people are very visual so that when they tune their um, awareness inward, they do have visual images that come to them. Mm -hmm. um, and we say that the, the higher self gives them to look at, to learn from. What can I find out by exploring my past lives? Uh, well, when we are shown some images from a past life, um, it is often because it holds some kind of information or secret for us that will help us to understand this life or live this life um, more fully. Sometimes there are, we could say, um, unresolved aspects of a life that we've lived before. And so we'll continue to replay this or play it out again and again until we understand it. Because again, once we learn the lessons from it, we don't have to have the thing anymore. So it's all about learning and moving forward. If I ask for healing, will I be healed for sure? The answer I will say is yes, you will receive the healing that's appropriate for you. And that is decided by your higher self based on what it knows of your plan. Um, your higher self, our higher self, the subconscious knows everything about us. It knows us more than we know ourselves. It knows why you're here and what you came to accomplish and what kind of help you wanted to get to stay on track. So it's going to provide the healing for anything that you don't need anymore. Are you ready to get started? Yep. Let's Good. do this. Let's do this. <laughs> awesome. So what is the reason that you came for a session? I want to find out why me having a disability and why me having a mental illness and why did everybody pick on me? Tell me a little bit about what the stuff is that you're talking about that you've been dealing with for your life. Around 16, 17, I was diagnosed with bipolar and just didn't know what to do with it, how to deal with it. I just want to know why me. Where did you draw your strength from? I had nobody. You had nobody? Except for my grandma. And how was grandma? Grandma's passed away. How was she then? For you? She was there when I needed somebody to talk to. Okay. And how did she make you feel when you did talk to her? She made me feel better about myself. Okay. Anything special that she said that made it work for you? 
or just in general? It's just in general. Her seeing her smile and her looking at me just made my day, but I can't do that anymore. Okay, because she's transitioned out of this life? She passed away in 2007. Okay. There's a real, like, rawness about having to deal with a lot of stuff by yourself. Yeah. You know, so then by the time you get to high school, you're seemingly pretty strong. Yeah. You're saying you don't have a good, like, tight group of friends or anything, but you have some kind of an amazing inner strength at this point. Like, I don't, like, I don't want to think back to my high school years because that's when I found out I was pregnant. So that's this, that's a really, really painful thing still, huh? Yeah. All Every right. like all my friends have kids. My two sisters have kids. Me, none. Are you trying to make peace with that today no, too? No, I or? just want to forget about it. Okay, so you've been trying to forget about it. How's that working for you? Nothing. No, it's not working. Okay. All right. Is that something that you also want to maybe bring into the questions yeah. today, just to help you to come to some kind of peace about the situation? Would that help you? All right. What's the first thing that you see? Blackness. What is that? Blackness. Blackness. Tell me about the blackness. I don't want it. Hmm? All right. So now knowing subconscious you're always here and you got Kira here today. May I speak to Kira's subconscious, please? Kira, do you give permission to speak directly to your subconscious? Kira? So here's the thing, subconscious, I know you're doing this for a reason. So we trust. So subconscious, we're asking you help her to resolve that internal dilemma, help her to make peace with it, and learn whatever there is to learn about that so she can put it to rest and move forward and be free from any sadness that she might still be holding. If there is anything subconscious you would like to say through her today, while she's so receptive, a simple message to help her. Is there anything you'd like to say? Mm. No? Are you receiving anything? How does your body feel? Numb. Numb? Okay. Is there any other information that would like to come through at this time to help Kira in the best possible way? So yeah, can you tell me a little bit about what you remember? All I remember is you asking me to see if I could see a red bird. Yeah. And after that, I don't know nothing else. Do you remember the part about when I asked you about what you were seeing or anything like that? I remember you asking me that, but I didn't, I didn't, did I tell you I was seeing anything? You said one word, yeah, what it looked like where you were, do you remember that? And you said blackness. Mm. Do you remember that? Yep. Oh, yeah. Did okay, now I know that one. Yeah, can you tell me a little bit more about what you were seeing, what it was like in the blackness? What was that like for you? Do you remember? Scary. Oh, it was scary for you. Why was that? Because I, what, what, I didn't know which one was coming out. Or what. You just didn't know what to make of it, or it was, yeah. yeah, okay. So I was wondering if you ever had any images of another world while you were under. It was, but all I seen was like it was like a tunnel. Mm -hmm. So, but I couldn't see what it was. Okay. But I was walking, but it was like a long walk. Anything popping into your mind about your purpose? All I can see is my grandma popping up. That's about it right now. Grandma's popping up. She called me my nickname, and I ain't saying that nickname. <laughs> you don't want to share that? No. Okay. Would there be a reason that your higher self would have had to kind of knock you out today to get you to receive? Would that be? 
make sense to you that you're I think it, that it did knock me out because as soon as I laid on this bed and you started started to talk to me I'm like hey then it started to kick in yeah so do you think that possibly your higher self would think that maybe you would have been resisting them if they didn't do that I think I was resisting them mm, yeah so here's the good news as you relax and allow the helpers to come in and help you energetically um, you can do more self-healing and now that you've had this experience, I hope it helps you remember what's available to you to access whenever you want it. And in some ways, would you feel like maybe now you don't have to be so resistant when you understand how much help mm -hmm. there is? Yeah. yeah. I have learned that mental illness is nothing to be ashamed of. It's something to learn from. There are many views on what it is and there are different ways to treat it. Even my own subconscious mind may have the potential to heal me. According to Diane, it has unlimited information and healing power. No one has ever told me that before. But what do psychiatrists think about these types of therapies? So we have a saying in medicine that the absence of evidence doesn't mean that we have evidence that it doesn't work. But generally, if people believe something will work, that is going to be quite helpful for them. And it's also the investment that they have in the therapy and the skill of the therapist. So I, I certainly wouldn't want to discourage people from participating in something that they see as helpful. At the moment, there just unfortunately isn't a lot of scientific evidence to, to recommend the therapies that, that some people would like to pursue. After the hypnosis, I noticed some change. My walls have came down. I'm more open. I'm ready to talk. I was getting butterflies in my belly, thinking I was still pregnant at the age of 18. I've lost a child. That was very emotional, but I need to get over that. I need to move on. I need to get clear to clarity about that. And I'm slowly getting there. I see things differently since the uh, hypnosis. I do feel at peace. I'm more confident about myself. I'm more relaxed. I'm not worthless. I'm a human being. God made me this way and I'm loved for who I am. I understand my life completely now. Years ago, I had holes through my life that needed to be filled and meeting all these people and going through these experiences I know that I can move on with my life because I am an eternal being